Hello and welcome back to Adobe Live from the sofa here in the UK every day from 12 to 1 and Fridays in fancy dress. So today, not really from the sofa. I'm an escort with two unicorns and I set all my billions on this unicorn to win the race. And Tony is at Heathrow Airport on his way to the moon because that that's the only place that doesn't have travel restrictions. So you can still fly to the moon. Yep. And our goddess Emma from her Greek temple. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm great. I'm loving this. I'm so happy to be back on the Friday stream. <laughs> How are you, Tom? Awesome. I am yeah. good, thank you. It's uh, it's great to be back in uniform after all this time. <laughs> now that I've joined Space Force, you know, the alien footage that we've seen this week, need to get out there and, and, and do something. So there you go. Keep us posted. And you guys out there, if you are wearing a fancy dress, make sure to post it on either Instagram or Twitter with hashtag fancy Friday streams so we can see it, what you're wearing. <laughs> Hope you enjoy this. <laughs> But what have you prepared today, Tony? Well, we're going to do some charts-ish sort of stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to work in Illustrator to start off with. Then we're going to move into your favorite XD a bit Ooh. later on to do something in XD. So there we are. That's essentially where we're going to go. And while charts is a big, big topic uh, in Illustrator because they appear simple, right? Uh, and to a point they are, but they've actually got a lot of power under the hood. So we're going to be looking at some of that stuff and giving you some tips for working with them effectively. There we go. How does that sound? Sounds like a plan, Tony. Brilliant. Awesome. More XD. Captain Tony. Stephanie. Captain. Oh, yeah. Correct. Captain Tony. <laughs> Colonel. We have to get used <laughs> to this. <laughs> I, got, I got stuffs. Look. <laughs> got stuff. Got all the stuffs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shall we get cracking then? Shall we begin? Go yes. on. And actually do some stuff. Doesn't this bring back a love of Fridays, don't you think? Just for me. Absolutely. We should do this every day. I think this is when we go really <laughs> mad. Yeah. <laughs> If, if, we if, should. We, we're oh. threatening people. If the lockdown continues, we're going to look like <laughs> this every day. This is a threat, an official threat. <laughs> I, I, I hate to burst your bubble, but it is like that every day here. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the new Space Force logo. So the boss has spoken to me and said, right, we're going to need to put some some charts together to get some information out there. And so that's essentially uh, what we're going to be doing. And the first tip, I have for you is about truly understanding groups. Okay, so to do that, because a lot of people think they do understand groups already, but maybe they do, but there's some tools that can help you, and in particular, one. So what I've got here, and I'm just going to reset my workspace just for a second, just to get rid of some extra panels here. Okay, what I've got is I've just got a bunch of different shapes, okay? And I'm going to select the two yellow circles that I've got just here. Oh, I think Illustrator's locked up. Are we still, can you still hear me? Yes. That's kind of interesting because my, <laughs> my Mac is Classic. Why up. don't we just move to XT? <laughs> <laughs> well, we would, but we can't, that. Move. <laughs> we can't move to anything just at the moment. I think I... <laughs> we just jump straight into XT. <laughs> I've got a horrible feeling, you know, that my machine has gone down, which is uh, awkward. I'm going to have Captain, to rejoin you in just great. a second. That's just the, the usual procedure ah. when you attempt flying to the moon. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you need a few attempts until you make it. <laughs> I am all going these to, fears. <laughs> I'm going to have to rejoin you in a minute. I'm so sorry. Can you? <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves for a second, and I'll be right okay. back. Well, okay, okay. The first, okay, I'll see you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, I think I've got it back. I've got really? control back. Oh, do you know wow. what? I can, I, I, right, Magic. okay, I'm going to get rid of the thing that's being naughty, which is quick time. Okay, <laughs> I there thought you were going to say XD. Close <laughs> yeah. everything no, gets it's not, it's, it's not XD. The, 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 the two culprits are either going to be Google Chrome, which I've also just quit, and definitely uh, QuickTime. Close everything that's not Adobe. <laughs> that's, 
that's a good anyway, right back with the program let's get to the moon right so i've got these two shapes here i am going to group them so we'll refer to that as group one then i'm going to select these three blue circles at the bottom and i'm going to group those okay so that's group two i'm then going to select both of those groups and group them that's group three okay and then i'm going to add the shape at the top and group those group four we all with that nice and easy yeah. right we all know if we've been using illustrator for any amount of time okay that you can double click and you can go into isolation mode and you can double click down through a hierarchy but there's another way that you can actually work with groups and this is actually very very important for charts because charts do form several sets of different groups in Illustrator. And the tool you really need to get to grips with lives underneath the direct selection tool. So if I tap A on my keyboard, just here to go to that, and then long press on that in the toolbox, there is the group selection tool. Now you can actually see that I've assigned mine uh, an extra shortcut here, okay, to use it, which is easy to do. You can just go to the edit menu, go to keyboard shortcuts, create a new set and so on. But why this is so handy is you can traverse, nice word, through the hierarchies with this. So if I click on this first blue circle just one time, okay, it selects that. If I click again, you can see it selects everything in that group. If I click again, it selects the next part, next group up. And if I click one more, it goes through the next group up like so. All good with that? Excellent. So that's nice and straightforward. Okay, let's move to the next thing, which is graphic styles. And I apologize if you know these things already, but, you know, broad audience, we ought to all understand uh, what we're dealing with here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some graphic styles very quickly. Okay, just in case you've never come across them. So I'm just going to get, actually, I'll just draw a simple shape here. Just going to draw a rectangle like so okay this will be the most basic graphic style ever right but what i'm going to do is turn this into a graphic style so the graphic styles panel i have just here it lives in the window menu okay with lots of other stuff in there mine's got a tremendous lot of other stuff and i'm going to create a new graphic style now i can use the icons at the bottom or simply drag this into the panel he says and i think because the zoom window was just in the way a little bit there it stopped me from doing it so let's bring that across not happening uh i know why because i'm not using the selection tool weird okay so we'll add that there's my graphic style like so so i'm going to create uh, a few more shapes so let's do an ellipse just here, for example, and we'll do uh, a polygon as well. So there we are, super duper. And I'll select all of those and make sure that they're using that graphic style. So the advantage is if anything changes, everything inherits that change. So just for example, if I came along here and changed the color of this shape, to yellow so i've overridden the graphic style i can then update the graphic style in a couple of different ways but the easiest way to do it is to drag that into the panel but hold down the alt or option key you see that something's wrong just there uh, with that because that should be working perfectly with that style it's of course a restart every time i start there we go working now so you'll see that ordinarily it highlights like that but when i hold down the alt or option key I can target that and then everything changes at the same time. All right, so nice and easy to do. It's tremendously powerful, the things you can do with graphic styles, but just at the moment, that's all we need to understand. The next thing you need to understand are paragraph styles. So text, of course, is probably where you come across styles uh, in the first place, okay? But just to be clear, what we're going to do is just add some text we'll just add some default text here like so okay and then we'll just go ahead i'm going to switch my workspace here to typography because that gives me quick access to the styles panels here okay and i can create a new paragraph style okay either on the menu there 
or just down here. If I hold down the Alt or Option key when I do that, we'll open this dialog. Okay, and I'll just call this my text just for the moment and just make a couple of simple changes here. Okay, and let's just call this acumen. We'll do from there. Change the size just a little bit. Let's make it a bit bigger. Have we got any of the usual culprits in here today, like so? Have we? We have uh, Kirsty here, Stuart, Chucky, Zantrine, Lisa, Oliver. Rufus is here, of course. Nice. There we go. Well, I hope everyone's dressed. Say hello to everybody in that list, pretty <laughs> much, really. Um, especially Kirsty and Sandrine, they are, they are regulars all the time. Right, so here we are. I've just applied my My Text Paragraph style to this text. But what I'm going to do is go for the style options here and make a change. So I'm going to change this from Acumen, okay, to let's make something very, very different, classic comic. And so that changes like so. So everything that was using that definition okay, would change as a result. And again, you probably know that already, but don't worry too much just at the minute. Okay, so next thing then that we need uh, to know are clipping masks because they are very, very useful in charts work. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually make a chart for this example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the advanced toolbar now. So if I go to the window menu, toolbars and advanced okay so i get all of the tools i've got a lot more here than ordinary because i've got loads of plugins running but i'm going to get the graph tools here the column graph tool and i'm going to switch to the pie graph like so and I'll how many that. how okay. many are there uh, seven i think in seven. total yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine there you go there's always a couple that i forget mainly this one, the radar graph, I forget that all the time, and the scatter graph, which is the most difficult one to set up the data for of all of these. Otherwise, all of these will change. Uh, they're interchangeable. But scatter radar, graphs, so. radar is important for you, Captain Tony. Radar, <laughs> radar is important for me as a colonel. In <laughs> <laughs> radar is important. Radar is really useful. When uh, actually in, in not radar radar, but radar charts are very, very useful when you're analyzing certain properties. So you might have done this yourself with skills evaluations where you do things like, you know, how how you respond to visual stimulus, audio stimulus, kinesthetic stimulus and so on as a learning map. And then they radiate outwards and you get a diagram that shows where your strengths are and where you can put some extra work in. But that was our top hit. That was Stephanie. I love it. Uh, oh, so for my pie chart here, sorry, I'm going to do uh, 50 in the first division and 30 in the second division and 20 in the last division. So this is the data window. You can uh, bring in data from an Excel spreadsheet or actually from a CSV or copy and paste from an Excel spreadsheet uh, data into here as well. Uh, everything provided it doesn't have any formulas in it. It doesn't understand that at all. Okay, so there you go. Right, so now I've got uh, those things in there. I'm going to hit the tick here to apply, okay, the data, and I'll close the data window just for the moment. Now let's go ahead and build uh, some graphic styles out here. So if I just go to uh, Essentials, and I'll go to Essentials Classic, actually, as a workspace. So this graphic style, I can come ahead and apply on that side. I want to build another one, really. So I'll get my group selection tool here and target this pie wedge. And we'll change the uh, color of that. We should be able to turn that into a graphic style as well. Graphs are really funny. They've got a weird, weird, weird hierarchy. And we'll get one more out. OK, and let's make that blue. I think that's contrasty enough for all of us. OK, and do that. And graphic styles also work a bit better with graphs and charts in Illustrator because sometimes when you change the data, they revert back to grayscale charts, which is what they did when they were built a long time ago. Um, but with graphic styles, that seems to help them stay. They kind of stick and keep their properties, which is really nice. I'm just going to select all of these things here. Uh, they've got a stroke on them at the moment, so I'm just going to remove 
uh, that am I getting rid of that like so okay so you'll notice that in that list of charts okay if I just tap J on my keyboard for the column graphs just so I can find it okay there's no donut chart and donut charts are popular I love donuts do you like donuts yes who doesn't Emma loves donuts <laughs> <laughs> I bet the people watching love donuts. Going for a bit no of a tangent. <laughs> Tiny tangent. Uh, my, my nickname actually is Tony Tangent. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. Emma a lot of things that you a lot Tony of things that, <laughs> Tony Tangent. <laughs> that really is my nickname. Amongst other um, things. I'm not going to tell you the one that Sharon has for me, but um a lot of things that you watch out on the internet will tell you that at this point, you should ungroup this thing. You don't have to do that at all. Okay. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to draw another circle. Now, my smart guides are on. Okay. So I'm going to go to the center here, and this is actually in the center of the document. Okay. I'm going to hold down Option and Shift and drag outwards, draw a circle like so. Okay. And I'm just going to deselect that and I'm going to do the same thing again like that. And I'll just give this one a slightly different color, very different color so that you can see it. We all good with that? Perfect. I'm going to select both of those two things and I'm going to turn them into a compound path. And with a compound path, the shape on top will knock itself out of the shape on the bottom. And there's a shortcut for that. It's Command-8 on a Mac, Control-8 on a PC and then I'm going to select both things there so the chart and the compound path and I'm going to turn this into a clipping mask okay so the shape on the top will mask off the content underneath and there's a shortcut for that command 7 like so so now I've got a donut chart and I can do lots and lots of different things with that donut chart like uh, let's add Let's add a drop shadow. We'll go back to the 90s just for the day. There you go. All right, so you can see that the drop shadow is working. And let's very, very quickly take that drop shadow away by uh, hitting the trash on the right-hand side here. So why would you do it this way as against just making those shapes? Well, here's the answer, right? Because it's not always straightforward um, with the information you get. Sometimes that information changes somewhat, okay? But this way, the way that I've done it, I'm still connected to that data, but you need one more skill to get to that. If we go to the layers panel here and use this disclosure triangle, yeah, just there to go into the contents of the layer, we'll see that if I drill down one more, right, then I actually go into that clipping group and just here I've got the graph. And I can use this thing here, this small area, which has no guide there that you can click on it. You just kind of have to know. It's like a magic thing, right? In in in, in, in InDesign, um, which has the same mechanism for layers, there's a little box there, which you might think, oh, I'll click on that and see what it does. But in Illustrator, no, you just have to be amazing with all the stuff. So now that I've selected the graph, I can go to the object menu, all the way down the bottom to graph and choose data. And now I'll modify the data. So now it's actually going to be 40 just here. It's going to be, I don't know, 35 just there and not 356 and 25 just there and apply that. All right now, there's that thing happening where one of the slices has changed in nature, but the other two have held on to that. And it is sometimes a bit hit or miss. Uh, as for how that works, but I'm just going to drag and drop my graphic style onto that, and you can see it's resolved in just a couple of seconds. Okay, so there is a donut chart, and there are lots of different ways that you can mess with these things. Um, am I all right to plug my YouTube channel for this? Because I've got quite a lot on there to do with uh, graphs and charts. Oh, well, I've done it already. <laughs> So if you Take go to YouTube, <laughs> youtube.com slash the design ninja, you'll find my infographics playlist and it tells you loads and loads of different hacks for uh, charts and graphs uh, in Illustrator. Okay, so back to the presentation -y thing. I'm using uh, Illustrator here to do this as a presentation. Shift F 
is the quick way to do that. Let's go to the next artboard. Graph designs is the final thing we're going to look at, okay, in terms of skills before we actually go ahead and build out something. I'll just tap escape just here. So what do I mean by a graph design? Well, I'll show you. This is one here for um, some satellite launches. It's made up, right? It's not real. This first satellite at the beginning, Sputnik, that was real, and it really did launch in 1957. Thanos was never a satellite in 1973. There may be one now, who knows? Sybil, equally unlikely. Jeff, probably not. <laughs> and Kevin, almost definitely not, but there you go. But these are actual graph designs. Now, the satellite images or, or drawings on top of them, okay, they are um, just added on afterwards. But these columns are actual graph data. Now, I'm using a plug in here to do the sort of star effects uh, at the top, and we don't need to worry too much. Um, about that but let me just go ahead and change some of the data so because this isn't in a clipping mask I can simply right click on it and choose data and so let's up Kevin's game here to 33 okay and we'll take Thanos's game down a bit to 17 and then apply that data okay now you probably saw Thanos drop down a little bit just there this is so weird saying that. Let's mess with Jeff now. Let's make Jeff maybe 32. Let's improve Jeff's game so you can see that. And you can see how that column changes. So that's what I mean by one of the forms of graph design. Okay, so if I just close the data window here for a minute. So all I'd have to do here, if there was something that needed to change in the data, okay, would be to just move these graphics back into place. So hardly uh, a really big task uh, to deal with. I think we're going to take this hat off now because uh, my space helmet's coming up the uh, um, up the garden path. So, okay. <laughs> we have a couple of comments. Um, yeah, go ahead. Matt I'm going to take the saying, jacket off as well. <laughs> Matt is saying Kevin. Kevin don't was mess. 2011, <laughs> not 2009. And Stuart is saying don't mess with Jeff. And we had some earlier uh, comments. Caroline uh, was saying, as an infographics designer, I use charts a lot but find it super fiddly changing the size, formatting, etc. once created. So I tend to ungroup and de-chart them as soon as possible. That is a great question. And that is, uh, or a great comment, uh, really, that leads to a question. And that's something I get asked quite a lot, actually. I'm just going to copy this graph out here. And I'll just go into this empty document and paste uh, that graph down. Now, obviously, you can't see the text here because that's white and all of that stuff. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this graph, okay, because you'll notice that when you have it selected, there are no handles, no transformation. That's because they're a special kind of object in Illustrator. Okay, so if maybe I just go ahead now and tap S on my keyboard for the scale tool, okay. Now, at the moment, you won't see anything change because the tool's got a tiny little marker just here at the minute. Okay, but if I now hit return to access the scale dialog and turn on preview, you'll see now that if I scale that down, because obviously you'd, I tend to do this by the dialog box because that way I can do it quickly and uniformly. Yeah, so if it needed to be smaller, then that's how you do it. And you'll notice that everything in there has scaled with it. Now, sometimes, by the way, on the everything scaling, that's because with transform. So let's just take our eyes over to the right a second to the transform panel here in the properties panel. And I'll go to the ellipsis just here. Right. Sometimes if it doesn't work properly, just undo because some things that you'd create require you to scale strokes and effects in order to work properly. OK, but otherwise you should be good. So hopefully who was asking that? Who made that particular comment? I uh, uh, can't remember. But if not, don't Caroline. worry. Caroline. Caroline. So hopefully, Caroline, that saved you from a bit more uh, from a bit of extra labor uh, in the future. OK, so how do we make a graph design? Well, I'll show you because here I've actually got uh, the same column design 
uh, just say, in fact, let's make something slightly different for this. What I'm going to do is draw a rectangle like so. It doesn't have to be rectangular, by the way, but it helps. Uh, draw a rectangle like so. And let's give this a bit of color just here. Very keen on this color. And I'm going to tap X to swap over to my uh, stroke and hit slash to get rid of that. And then X to go back to that. I'll tap P to get the pen tool. I'm just going to add a point at the top here. Then with my direct selection tool, uh, I'm just tapping through the keys to do this, by the way, and describing which tool I'm using. Um, I'm going to make this into a pointy shape like so, something like that. OK, uh, actually, do you know what? Let's make this a gradient. Uh, so I'll just hit the period key here and just switch this out for a gradient. So we'll go from that color to exactly the same color, uh, but we'll also change the opacity there to zero like so and swivel that around to 90 degrees there yeah, like that okay so you can see what we've got there so nice soft thing gradating like that and then i'm going to get my line tool so backslash on the keyboard and i'll choose a point typically i go down towards the bottom on these because of the low numbers okay i'm in the middle so hopefully you can see where my cursor is I'm going to hold down the Option key, Alt and Windows, and Shift together, and then just draw outwards until I meet the boundaries of that shape. Okay, just like that. All right now, let me zoom in so you can see that that object is actually there. And then I'm going to turn it into a guide. Now, there's a shortcut for that: Command Five or Control Five. But otherwise, you can go up to the View menu. Come down to guides and choose make guides from there. Okay, and it turns that line into a guide. Now it's really hard for you to see that, but hopefully, as I hover, I don't know if is my screen zoom working for you guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can see that it says guide just there. Okay. Now the important thing here, and the easiest way to test it, okay, is to just click on the guide. And if you're able to select it, then you're in good shape for the next step. Otherwise, you need to select nothing at all, okay? And in the properties panel, you can just come up to this icon here and make sure this icon, lock guides, is turned off. If you've got, if you're really bored and you wanna use the menu a lot, you could also go up to the view menu, come all the way down to guides and then choose <laughs> unlock guides from there as well. But you'd have to be properly bored uh, to do that. Now, I'm slightly worried there that I misaligned that, and I did. Can you just see it poking out? So I'm just going to align those two things up like so. Okay. So I've got both things selected, the shape and the guide, and then up to the object menu, all the way down to the bottom to graph. Really does deserve its own menu, by the way, or at least being a bit further up uh, there. And then choose design, just here like so. Okay. And it goes ahead here with an existing, so I've got another document open, so it's showing that design here, but I choose new design. Now you'd also like to think that you could just double click on this to rename it, but the people who actually make or made the graph tools in Illustrator, they were actually paid by the UI element. Yeah, so they had to put more in. So here you actually click rename, <laughs> then you can rename it. So let's just call it pointy. Yeah, so that's earned them another $5. <laughs> then you can hit okay. Yeah, and then you can hit OK again, <laughs> like so. And so happy, 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 because, you know, yeah, managed to get, it's not got enough buttons. Put some more buttons in, put them in now. <laughs> so there we are. Leading UX designers' <laughs> eyes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, they're the ones who are winning. Right, this piece of artwork is that now actually stored inside that panel, okay, inside this document. So I'm just going to delete what I've got there, okay, and let's create... Uh, actually, we'll create a bar graph tool, right, because that will give you another teaching point just here, right? So what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle like so, and this defines the boundary for the chart, okay? And then let's pop in some data. So give me some numbers between 1 and 20. Emma, go. 15. 15. Your turn, Stephanie. 30. 30. Your turn, Tim. 
42. And I'll, and I'll be Rufus for the purpose of this one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 29. Good. Thanks, Rufus. Excellent. Right. So there we go. Uh, I'll apply that like so. Now, actually, they've gone ahead and... 27. 27. <laughs> 27. 27. Okay. I'm fixing it now. There you go. So fixed. <laughs> 27. Okay. So now I accidentally went ahead and carried on and drew a column graph. But here's the thing. Yeah. You remember at the beginning I said that these things are interchangeable apart from the scatter plot, which uses a different set of rules. So what I can do is right click on the graph and choose type. And then from here, I can choose bar like so and hit OK. And you can see it converts it to a bar chart like so. OK, then what I'm going to do is I am going to get my group selection tool. OK, now I assigned a shortcut to it, but I'll just grab it from underneath the direct selection tool. And then I'll click on one of the bars and then I'll click again. And you can see how I've selected all four of those, right? With just two clicks. Yeah, rather than holding down shift and trying to click other things. So it, it really is worth investing time in that tool, not just for charts and graphs, but generally if you're working with groups. I'll then go to the object menu, come down to graph all the way down at the bottom. And here I choose column. Now I know that's a bar, but you have to choose column, okay? And then I get into my graph column and I can click on pointy like so, all right? So that's done. Now, by default, this will scale these things vertically. So let's just go okay like that and you can see they're scaling uh, like so. If you look at this one here, it's much more pointy than this one just here, okay? So I'm gonna modify that again, just get my selection tool here, and I'll just go down and choose column. Now they're all changed. I'm going to stick with pointy. Now I could have uniformly scaled, which will actually scale them outwards as well as upwards. Sometimes a nice effect to do that. So you ought to see it. There's no preview button here. Okay, but you can see how that changes. Let's go ahead now and go back to that. What I am actually going to do, repeating is what it sounds like. It just repeats. Sliding. And sliding uses the information from the guide that you added. That's why it's absolutely crucial to have that element in, right, for it to use. Otherwise, it won't be able to use it properly. Okay. And when you hit OK, you'll see how now all of the points are the same, have the same uniformity. Okay. And they are all scaling along like that. Nice and easy to do. Uh, I think you'll agree. Uh, if you go to the YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, as I mentioned earlier, you can see one there that has a mini bus, uh, like a minivan thing uh, going along, and you can add little graphics to the end of it uh, and so on. Lots and lots of different possibilities uh, you can do with it. You can also transform things afterwards if you wanted to. So just to show you something that I did, which is actually bad information display, but I did it anyway, um, shearing. Well, I went like this and sheared these things for when I did something on aircraft, like so. So they had little airplanes in the front there, four different kinds of airplanes, and then they all were all flying upwards, which is very nice. Looks like the Space Force, uh, Space Force Friday night party uh, just up there. That's it. That's the way it goes. Right, so hopefully you can see there where the whole thing with uh, using the group selection tool works really, really well. Of course, the same thing would be for the paragraph styles that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so if I click here on 50 at the end and click again, all right, I can go ahead. I'll just switch my workspace to typography because it saves me having all of the panels out. I'm gonna create a new paragraph style. I'll just call this um, uh, category axis, even though it's on the value axis here, but there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to something in fact let's have avenir or something like that there we go okay and we'll make that bold i think can't see bold in there there black. isn't one use black black that's, the, that's the new bold because <laughs> <laughs> the friday bold excellent <laughs> And uh, 72 points is probably a bit heavy, so let's just make this 42 points, because 42, of course, is the answer uh, to everything. And the character color here 
I'm just going to make this RG, or maybe not RGB red, that's a bit too violent. Uh, let's have something a little bit more coca drinky drinky thing okay if i hit okay now it's not applied just yet but as soon as i apply it you can see now it's using all of that stuff and that's exactly what i did with the satellite chart that you saw earlier because that way right if i needed to make any changes they could change in one place and even these tick marks here if i click on the first one and click again just there i could change their stroke weight for example Okay, and then I could come along and click this one. In fact, sometimes if you click on the uh, edge one first and then click again, you can actually get the tick marks and change all of those things at once. However, you just have to be vigilant because I've actually got the numbers selected there too, uh, which does happen also. Okay, so those are the key skills that you need uh, to work with charts and graphs. Right, uh, I think actually that's it on that one let's just do a quick double check uh, on my little plan thing good and we can close that up so there you are all of the things you've learned were all uh, in this example just here so i think it's time to do some xd stuff stephanie what do you reckon i reckon you should put on your hat back <laughs> and fly <laughs> That shirt Straight was into the, the, the most practical shirt ever. It was such a yeah. transition from Tony into <laughs> weekend Tony. <laughs> we get two outfits today. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Poetry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, by the way, but I've got little stormtroopers all over my T-shirt. But. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy business. Right, I'm going to create a new Illustrator document. No more hats. My head's hot. Uh, I'm going to go to mobile here and I'll choose... Uh, I'm going to choose iPhone X just for this. In fact, is there not a Max one? I thought there was a Max one. Do, do, maybe not. Well, there you go. Okay, so I'll choose iPhone X like so. And I'm going to draw a chart just here. All right, so I'm going to go to my charting tools. I will choose a line graph tool. And we're going to play the numbers game again in a minute, so be ready. Yep. And I'll draw a chart like so, something like that. Can you notice how I'm drawing that slightly off center? Yep. From the document. There's a reason for that, is because the numbers aren't included in where you drag. So the rectangle you actually drag is only the region for the chart, because that makes sense. I think. <laughs> anyway, right. So let's have some numbers then. Uh, keep them to two digits, please. Emma, you're first. Uh, 26. 26. Ooh, there we go. Stephanie. Good number. <laughs> 11. 11. Ooh. Tim. 23. 23. That's all Rufus. 42. For, oh, the answer to everything, 42. And I'll have one that's somewhere in between all of those things. 33, there you go. <laughs> right, have a look at the graph at the moment, just here, right? Now, this is something that people come across quite often when they're trying to draw a line graph. All of the data points end up in a line. And that's because the graph has to be, or the data has to be formatted in the right way for it to be interpreted as a line, which is basically as one series going down Fortunately, I can fix that with a single click here in Illustrator by using this button in the data window, transpose rows and columns. When I click that, everything's down in a column. Okay, and if I hit the tick, suddenly I've got a line like so. Okay, so there is my chart plotted. Pardon me, <coughs> like so. Right, so there we are. One final tip for you. So if I just collect all of this stuff here, so I'm just going to cut this data and paste it in the next column. If I was doing this over a range of years, so for example, if I said 2014, hit return, can you see what's happening here? I'm getting digits and whatever on the side, uh, decimal places. I can actually change that inside the cell options. So I can change the number of decimals down to zero, for example and it brings everything to an integer, unless it has a decimal place with a number after it. If it's got zeros, it's just ignored. So 2015, just here, 2016, 
2017 and so on. Oh, I'm actually typing across the, the things there. Hilarious. I keep forgetting to hit return. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Just here with this. <coughs> Pardon me. What do you reckon is going to happen if I click apply? Well, I'll show you. It's going to go crazy because Illustrator suddenly starts interpreting these as actual data. To stop them from doing that, what you have to do is basically comment them out, okay, by adding quote marks before anything that's not actually a number. So because this is actually a label for a series of data, what you'd have to do, okay, is just go ahead and quote all of those things out. Now, if you're working from an Excel spreadsheet, uh, and certainly on Windows, that can sometimes be a little bit tricky. It's not, it's hardly the end of the world style tricky or, or a real major disaster tricky. Um, let me just apply that now. And you can see how that's worked correctly. Uh, because sometimes Excel, depending on how you've got it set up, um, you have to escape out the uh, quote character, normally by preceding it with something like a backslash, or I can't remember the exact character you use, to be perfectly honest, but just to get that from Excel into Illustrator. If you've got a lot of data, then there you go. Okay, so I've got a chart there, which I'm gonna keep very, very simple because this is just for the purposes of demonstration. What I'm going to do is save this just here. Okay, uh, and I'll just call this demo chart like so. Okay, and save that as an Illustrator file. And I will go to my finder and create a new finder window just here and go out to the desktop. Uh, where did I save that? Interesting. Oh, I saved it into the Creative Cloud files. Here we go. So let's just go ahead and get that, like so. And just so much stuff. You can see how organized I am uh, ordinarily. I bet this is this is agony for uh, for Steph. She loves likes the uh, likes the organization. No, I like a good search functionality. <laughs> 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 and Apple does it quite well, so. <laughs> it's also part of UX. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Um, so here I've got demo chart. You'll see that if I right click it, I can actually choose open with XD. Ooh. Okay, and XD understands the Illustrator document. Now, if you do want to bring in charts that contain actual data into XD, you are gonna have to sever the link between the two things to do the thing that I'm gonna do next, because you get this kind of crazy group arrangement here. And just to give you an illustration of what that looks like, I'm gonna to go to my layers here in XD, and you'll see at the moment, this is called group 15. So I'm gonna ungroup it, same shortcut as Illustrator, Shift Command G, uh, Shift Control G to do that. Okay, and now you can see I've got group 13, group 10, group seven, and group three. They don't even make sense from that order. It's like, where is this going? Right, so uh, if I ungroup it again, Shift Command G, you can see now I've got some labels here with the numbers inside of them, and I've got group 12, eight, and it's just going crazy. I'll do it one more time. And I've still got groups and I'll do it one more time. Okay, and finally, I'm down to all of those things, but I can work with them all independently, okay, here in Illustrator if I want to. So it's great that it does understand all of that stuff. And the graph tools, to be honest, haven't changed um, for quite a while now. Uh, so that's why they're still working that way. And they conform to a standard that was developed a long time ago. Okay, 1993, actually, I think is uh, is the time it was done. Okay, so I'll close out that document because I don't need it because I've got a document here that is prepared, prepared already. Uh, so let's have a quick uh, look at this. If I just test this for you so you can see it. Okay, so this is called Squidge. Yeah, and there's a little sofa with some slippers a book, which if you actually saw what was on those pages, it's my profile pictures. <laughs> I'll just put them in for no reason whatsoever. Okay, scroll down a bit, and I've got this usage button here, Then I've got a little profile. Uh, the profile picture here, not a real person, uh, generated by uh, one of the plugins that I've got here 
uh, I think, and Steph, you'll, Stephanie will correct me if uh, I'm wrong, but I think this one was UI faces or this person does not exist is another one. Um, in fact, it might have been that this person is not a real person, something like that. Uh, so generated by an AI. So here we are. This is a, a bunch of staff that she joined in this particular time, February 2018. Uh, she's saving money on her energy, uh, 321, and she's moved that up a bit. This quarter, she's not doing too well because uh, she's managed to save or uh, one pound 86. And then I can go through these different icons for stats. So if I click here on energy, then I've got this area, right, which is where we're going to add a chart and do something cool with it. So if I just zoom in on that window, are they enjoying this uh, this one, uh, Stephanie and Emma? Is it going oh, down this okay? Is great. Yeah. yeah. Good. 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 Right. We all so need charts. We do all need charts. Uh, you spend a surprising amount of time as a designer working with interpreting data, and charts come into it somewhere, right? Quite often. I think they are an essential skill to have, and provided you can uh, proof yourself against errors. So the more you keep that connection with the data in Illustrator, the more you are set up for inevitable client or, or, or team changes to the data, and also mistakes, because we do make mistakes. Right? So keeping that connection is really, really important. So I've got this area here. You can see I've got some guides. I love the way that XD... Uh, ads guides you'll notice there are no rulers in the document if i just go to the edge of any artboard i get this double arrow like so and i can just drag in a guide like that and if i don't want it I just drag it back to the edge super sweet uh way to do that love that wish illustrator did it that way in all honesty it'd be fantastic right so what i'm going to do is i am going to just hide the plugins window that i've got just there okay and i'm in the design mode here and I'm going to add, uh, with the pen tool, a simple line to represent some data. I'm not going to bother drawing uh, all of the different tick marks and whatever. We can just have fun with this, just play with it. So I'm just going to click here to draw a line and come out here just down a little bit. I'm going to double click there to draw a curve. I'm up just a little way, double click there, more of a curve, and double click just there. Okay, so just those four points should do just fine. I'll just hit the escape key just to come out of that tool. And I'll just change the color and the weight of the stroke just here. So if I just increase the stroke weight, just there. Um, Stephanie actually hooked me up the other day with uh, a really cool uh, tool for gauging um, uh, color. Yeah, and making sure that things were contrasty enough and had a uh, good color. If I just go back to that plugin thing, it's called Stark just here. And you can do things like check for contrast and it checks against the AA and AAA standard just to make sure. So I need to select stuff in order to do it. So if I select the artboard You need to select here, the artboard, yeah. Yeah, got it. And got it there. So you can see here that it's got a contrast level of 15.87 to one just there, which well exceeds the AAA standard, but we can see that hopefully pretty much anyway. Uh, and you can check against not only the two, the two most common forms of uh, color blindness, uh, protonopia and deuteranopia, you can actually check against trinopia. Uh, and there's a pro version here, um, which allows you to go for these anomalous ones as well, which is just crazy. Uh, that you can do that. So really, really good. Tiny, tiny percentage of the population that have a couple of these uh, in here, right? But nonetheless, still important. Right, so I've got my little line just here. This, for the moment, is going to be my graph. I want a couple of elements uh, just to add into it. So I've got a little component thing uh, just here, not that one. Uh, let me just get this. That's the wrong box. Let's go, Ooh, there we are, little button like so. Drag that in, you can make that small. I'm just gonna override this one just here and also make that small. Uh, there we go, so I'll just put um, current, no, recent just in there and I'll let it correct my English as well for me. 
and just hit escape to come out of that. It's really good. I, I like it. It's all good. All right. And I'll just pop that just there. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw another one here. Now, what I should have done really is done those slightly smaller and done it on a repeat grid, maybe just to start off with. But I think that's fine for the purposes of this. I'm watching the clock at the same time. Uh, and I'll just do change this one to current. There, like so. Okay. And I'll also make this a bit bigger because otherwise it's just going to jar with me something rotten. Okay. Right. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to collect these things together. So all three things that I've got there. Okay. And I am going to turn them into a component. Now there's a shortcut for that, Command K, uh, to do so, which it has done, like so. And it's appeared in my component window over here, okay, which I've just closed. And in the properties inspector on the side here, right, you can see I've got this as the default state. And there's a plus just to the side of it, which I can click and create a new state, which I'm going to call current like so and then i'm going to with that highlighted which is the important thing because i can switch between the two at the moment you won't see any difference whatsoever right but i can switch between those easily i'm going to double click to go in and edit the component here i'm going to double click again right so once i went into the line the second time i've actually gone to the anchor points i'm going to move this anchor point up away and turn it pointing that way just there i'm going to move this anchor point up a little way in fact turn it into a curve it wasn't a curve i don't know if that's going to glitch that now that i've done that and let's get this one there like so something like that okay so if i click between the two things now if i just come out of that for a second target the component okay and oops there we go and go to default state it's down there like that current state it's down there like that. I'll switch out now to prototype mode now that I've got those things together and I can target the component just here. And I'm going to add an interaction for this. Tap will be the trigger for the interaction. I'm going to choose auto animate. And then I'm going to choose uh, down to the default state just here. Now that's because I'm currently in the current state, but I'll just choose default state. I'm going to change this to three seconds, which is quite a long time in terms of uh, visual media, but it works well with this kind of transition. I'll then go to the default state, add another trigger, which is going to be tap, auto animate, and switch that to current. And that's also at three seconds. And that's another thing I love about XD because it's sticky with things like that. I don't have to go and highlight it and change it again, which is really, really nice. Now, I think we're about all set there. So I could click play at the top here, but I'm going to hold down command. That would be control on Windows and hit return to go into preview. Now, Stephanie could jump in at this point and say, if I'd had that artboard selected, <laughs> it would have taken me directly to that state. Okay, so I'll actually click on that artboard, okay, on its name at the top here, all right, and do that again just to show you it does work. Then I can come along and just tap. And you can see right there, really nice transition. Now, as it is, the whole thing is actually an interactive region, right? But if you were demonstrating this, okay, to somebody, it, you would just target the button like so, and it would look to all intents and purposes like you were doing those things, which remember, this is a prototype and you're trying to get it through a journey right a never-ending journey uh, of actually just testing it like so okay there we go that worked all right i think brilliant tony not bad <laughs> i did add a couple of other things in here just for giggles it got nothing to do with charts really right but i thought what we could do is we could have a little info button here somebody may have helped me with this by the way <laughs> <laughs> Right. Or go, make, make, help me with the idea. Right. It was but me, I, right? It was me. It was Emma. <laughs> <laughs> if I click on the thing, you can see now I get a box that says your usage has increased. But I think I can't, my eyes are really, really old, really old, like old, like the hills, old. I can't see that very yeah, much. Because really. it's, 
Sorry, Tony, but I have to tell everybody that it's like a big collaboration between Emma, Stephanie, and myself to train you for every Friday. So, you know, <laughs> like a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, and I don't make it easy, do I? <laughs> Especially when some days I turn up and it's not even me. There's just a puppet going, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a puppet around there. <laughs> so I can't quite reach it. Anyway, uh, because my eyes are really, really old, I can't see that very well. But fortunately, I've got this little bubble here which will read it out to me. Your usage has increased significantly over the last six weeks. Are you spending more time at home? <laughs> so even with extra sarcasm, <laughs> it just comes in. And again, that was another easy, easy thing to build in. Um, inside of xd i was just able to add this as a speech item okay to uh, the bubble on this element so here's the component here if i double click into it this itself actually has uh, states just here as well so let me just do that again with feeling All right so you can see i've got a state here called tapped so i can switch between those two things i've then got the speech bubble here which i can double click on and all i've done is say on tap do speech and playback, use this particular voice, uh, which was Amy on this one. We'll change it to Emma for the next one. And then okay. inside of here, I've typed it there like so. If only if it was your lovely voice, Emma, rather than the one oh. that we're about to get. No, <laughs> no, it's, it, it's our Emma. Your usage in. has increased significantly over the last six weeks. Are you spending more time at home? <laughs> I'm sure that sounds like she's been sucking on a helium balloon. <laughs> I do have a full-time job. I don't record these <laughs> on my weekends. <laughs> uh, and just in case you've never seen it before, there are a number of ways you could share this out. So, you, I mean, you can collaborate on pretty much every aspect of XD as well. You could also share this as a prototype that you could view uh, in a browser or on a device. Okay, you can, if, if all else fails and they can't use any of those things, click up here and record a movie of your journey through the app. Now, of course, that's no good for testing because you're kind of prescribing the way that people will move through it rather than allowing them to explore and find out if the way that you've worked out is the correct solution. You can also, and I've, I've had to unplug my phone actually because I think that was what was causing uh, the issues earlier. I've got the XD app here on my phone. Okay, now at the moment, it's just showing me what cloud documents I've got on here, which is Squidge. So if I tap on that, it loads the app like so. Okay, so I can scroll just like that. I can come along and tap that element if, like so. It takes me through uh, just there. I can tap this one. By the way, did you notice um, how I designed uh, this one? Uh, Steph, for people who don't just go ahead with another hand and just use their thumbs and tap like that. I was thinking, Very good. Uh, I was channeling my inner young person. Right? <laughs> so I can tap through to that. Now it's currently in that state because that's the state I've left it in um, here on the device. And that's another great thing about XD. You can make changes even while things are live, but you get the idea. Right? I could go ahead and I could tap on this. Your usage has increased significantly over the last six weeks. Are you spending more time at home? See? So I've got a real way to show that off to uh, the people that I'm working with, to all of the stakeholders, uh, and show them that that's where we are so far, get people to play with it, see what they make of it, see what the, their suggestions are, and part of the model that is. And that's it. I think we're good. Is this the first time we've ever hit uh, on time? This is brilliant. Look at you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. So well prepared, Tony. <laughs> <I'm so> <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie made me come to two meetings this week to do stuff to make sure I wasn't just going to just do Hat Expo. <laughs> <laughs> we used to so much more chaos from you. What's happened? <laughs> Stephanie, please do this on a weekly basis. <laughs> <laughs> only when it comes to xd but i think it was a great example from tony when he said he would like to showcase how to do graphs in illustrator i said why don't you you know uh, combine it with xd because you can not only open illustrator files in xd you can also copy and paste graphs just across and then animate them which you can't do in illustrator because a lot of people think they have to go to after effects and animate their graphs there and no it's amazing it's a lot easier 
I mean, Ste- Stephanie's actually Stephanie's actually got on. Um, it's on your behance, right down at the bottom. That loads and loads of different examples. But there's, there's the Max Twenty Twenty. Uh, 2019. UI. I don't think Max is happening this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Precise that. laughs> oh my word. It's just a it, guess. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but that is because I'm in Space Force now and we went out this morning for a quick, quick run and we, you know, we did the Kessel run in 9.3 parsecs and I thought I'd actually come back in 2021. Um, where it was lovely because everything was flowery. There were unicorns everywhere. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> yes, 2019, the 2019 UI kit. Um, is on there and there are examples of lots of different things for you to play with but there's a nice example of a graph which has nice curvy lines and it has um buttons with four different states for attendees uh there so you can filter by male and female um special requirements and uh i can't remember what the other one oh no and then all so you can see all things and it changes and transitions through them beautifully and, and you can see paste the link in the chat so mm, yeah that would be a, that'd be grand because you should um play with it. i think we should have a couple more xd sessions actually we, uh, i'm way. up for that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because there are still people who's this is the thing right we're all as designers and illustrators and all these things we're all so busy yeah and that, that if there are positives to be had from the situation we're currently in you've got that bit of extra time to learn and develop and go back uh, into the workplace with more skills than you have before, increasing your own value to your employer or to your clients. Um, now's a good time to do it. And of course it's good to have fun as well. You know, I, I really look forward to Fridays and wearing a silly hat and that Where's isn't the one that you I have wear to put it, You have to put it up to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As we wrap up, make sure to bring it, back the pilot or where are we now? Oh, <sighs> brilliant. We're still on the way to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Safe other, landing. Oh, okay. The other one. Oh man. Oh, so demanding. There we are. Thanks Tony. We can do it without. <laughs> And remember to join us on Discord, Tony. Yes. Okay. I will. Great. <laughs> well, being told off. <laughs> right, guys. <laughs> A strange voice came out of nowhere in my studio. It's amazing. And Rufus is already already waiting for you at the space shuttle in the moon. On Rufus the moon. is yeah. ever present. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Fantastic. Paul. Brilliant. Thanks, Tony, okay. for the safe journey. You're welcome. Today. <laughs> I feel like this is the closest we'll get to traveling anywhere these days. So felt like quite the achievement. <laughs> what have you thought? <laughs> uh, and thanks, yeah, Stephanie, we for joining us as well. Another week. <laughs> <laughs> Join us for more next week. Uh, we're spending another fancy Friday stream. So thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> We've had a great session again today. And folks here on Behance, Don't forget to join our new Discord, as Rufus said, to stay in touch with us and keep up with our UK community. So we'll make sure to share the link in the chat as well. See you on Monday, as always, 12 to 1. Stephanie will be back for another live session with the UK Creative. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe.